pleasure to introduce Kim Richardson. And the Kentucky State Conservation Agency has developed a land manager self-assessment and conservation planning tool to address non-point pollution issues from agricultural operations. My pleasure to introduce Kim Richardson, who will take it away here for the next few minutes. Kim? All right, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our um, Ag Water Quality Plan web-based tool. This is a tool that was um, put together in combination with the Division of Conservation here in Kentucky, along with the University of Kentucky, um, to just make a tool that makes it easier for landowners to do their own agricultural water quality plan. Now, you're probably saying, well, what is an ag water quality plan? Um, back in 1994, the Kentucky General Assembly enacted the Kentucky Agriculture Water Quality Act. And what that basically said was that any landowner who had 10 acres or more in agriculture or forestry production must develop a water quality plan. And these plans include um, best management practices that will protect water quality. Um, and then also it established the Kentucky Agriculture Water Quality Authority, which is a, a large multi-agency committee um, that developed the state um, water quality plan. And they are continually reviewing any best management practices and ways to better educate landowners about the Ag Water Quality Act. So um, who needs these plans? Basically, anybody farming on 10 acres or more. Um, yes, you do have some hobby farms that might be the five acres. They are not included in this. Um, but if you have 10 acres or more, state law says that you have to have a water quality plan. And more importantly, if you're going to participate in any kind of cost share program, including the Kentucky State Cost Share Program, equipped within the state of Kentucky, and the Governor's Office of Ag Policy's County Agriculture Investment Program, or the CAPE program, uh, which is a state program here in Kentucky, you must have a water quality plan or uh, your points will severely drop and you won't rank. Um, in the top to get funded in those programs. So um, it, it's very important that a landowner um, have access to build these plans. So number one, they can always print the document and create a plan from that. But let's say we have a landowner who lives in Tennessee. Um, he needs to have an ag water quality plan because he owns some land here in Kentucky. Well, a lot of landowners would just go into their local conservation district, talk to the district conservationist or the technician there, and work on an ag water quality plan. Well, this landowner doesn't have that luxury because he's an Addison T landowner down in Tennessee. So what he can do is go to this web-based tool uh, located on the University of Kentucky's website and create his plan. And that's what I'm going to sh go into showing everybody about how this web-based tool works. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Okay. So um, this is what you will see when you go to that page. It's just your basic um, opening page. You'll see over there on the left on how to use the tool. Um, where you need to start, any helpful hints. Also, it's also good to go look at your um, all best management practices that are available um, through the Ag Water Quality Plan. And also, we give um, landowners a lot of other um, um, links there to um, go to other resources that they may need to access. So, um, what I done here was I went and hit start here. And that brings me into entering in my personal information. The farm name, where it's located in the state of Kentucky, um, FSA farm number, track number, all of that, names of operators and so on. Also, it will cue you to create a username and a password. and um, that, that will help you if you need to get back in and modify your plan 
and then it also asks you um, for a security question so that if you forget that password or username, you can go and uh, find it that way. So the most pertinent question um, on this first page is um, to find out if a landowner actually needs a water quality plan. So you see the criteria there. Do you own 10 acres or more in Kentucky? Are you using it for agriculture or um, timber production? Um, do you have other plans that are enacted? Um, do you store pesticides? Do you have livestock? This is just going to determine the, your need for a plan. So based on the questions that I answered, um, I needed to complete an ag water quality plan. Um, and I made that first step. So you'll see up at the top, there's different portions of the Ag Water Quality Act. It involves crops, farmstead, forestry, livestock, pesticides and fertilizers, streams and other bodies. They are the parts of the Ag Water Quality Plan. So I said in my questions that I raised crops on my farm. So I would hit the crop um, tab and it would start asking me questions about my crop. Do you ever produce row crops or on hilly or steeping sloping land greater than 6%? You answer that yes or no. Then you go in there and you check off the best management practices that you already have on your property. And um, that's what your plan is going to be made up of, are those implemented best management um, practices. So um, it moves up, moving on through the tabs, it asked me about my farmstead. Um, and because I answered the question, do you live on your land or do other people live on your land? So it begins to ask me, do, um, do, is any solid waste dumped or burned on your land? And you would answer that. You dispose of on-site water, wastewater or sewage. Um, you answer those questions, and, and it'll just keep continuing from section to section. Um, this next slide, um, it says I answered no to the question, do you harvest and raise um, trees for timber on your land? Because I answer no to that, it's telling me that I need to go on to the livestock section because I don't need to answer any questions about the forestry section. And this is what is going to come up at the end. Uh, it's going to tell me my farm name and all that, all that general information. Then it's going to go through each of the questions that I answered and um, the implemented BMPs that I've already put on my farm. So in streams and other water bodies, um, it says you have to cross a stream. And I said no, because I've already implemented a stream, uh, stream crossing protection. So um, this is basically your long um, form of your plan. Um, and what this shows here um, is the basics. Um, when, when a landowner creates that plan, he's going to not only get the best management plans he has implemented, but it's also going to tell him the whys and wherefores. Um, you'll see right around the middle of that slide about the corrective measures process. Um, the Ag Water Quality Plan has a um, a measure in it that if a landowner in the state of Kentucky gets cited, um, gets a notice of violation from the Kentucky Division of Water for a water quality issue, if that landowner has an ag water quality plan, then he becomes eligible for corrective measures process. And what that is, is the corrective measures process will allow a landowner to receive funding from the Division of Conservation to, um, to correct that problem that he's been cited for. And it's a very unique process, and it's been very successful <clears throat> in the years that we've been doing the Ag Water Quality Plan. Um, as my predecessor used to call it, um, it's an insurance policy for landowners in the state of Kentucky. You get that Ag Water Quality Plan, not because of the insurance factor, but because it's state law, 
but if you get into a problem, that Ag Water Quality Plan says that somebody's going to be there to help you out and correct that problem. Um, mo moving on, it will. Um, well, um, it'll also create a self-certification, and basically what that says that as a landowner, I certify that these practices are on my farm, um, that I have this plan, and I'm willing to follow all protocols associated with the Ag Water Quality Plan. Um, Ray, that's the end of my presentation. I know I've went over that pretty quick. Um, the Kentucky Ag Water Quality Act is, is a very unique thing. Um, <coughs> excuse me, not only for the state of Kentucky, but for the nation. Um, it just gives that, as I said before, that landowner um, some security, knowing that if he does have a problem, there is um, ways and means to help um, fix that problem. Okay, so, so, Ray? Much, um, yes, thanks so much, Kim. Uh, outstanding presentation. Uh, I'm often reminded of risk management when we talk about some of these things, and the producer can reduce their risk of, uh, of uh, not only water quality problems, but also of uh, environmental regulation and so forth by doing these things, and you've presented us an excellent tool in that. Kim, you anticipated the first question. You anticipated the first question, which is, who has access to this information? And the second follow-up would could it be used against the producer in water quality um, enforcement? And you covered part of that, but who has access first, and then uh, can it be used with a producer water quality enforcement? Well, the the main audience that has access to the plan would be that landowner, um, and also. Um, when he's doing any planning with maybe his district conservationist with NRCS or his conservation technician. Um, so basically, Ray, it is a plan that that landowner can share with others. Um, we, it does um, come under um, the laws for the Ag Water Quality Act um, do have some, um, some things listed in there that cannot re be released about an ag water quality plan, um, but for the most part, it is that landowners to show it. Now, about can it be used against someone? That was never the intention, and um, I think, no, I believe that our partnership that we have with the Kentucky Division of Water um, they are part of the Agriculture Water Quality Authority. They are part of who designed um, this Ag Water Quality Plan. They have been on it on this since the very beginning. Um, helps negotiate the fact that I don't think the Division of Water would ever use an Ag Water Quality Plan against someone. Now, we, we get up into the EPA. Um, it has never been used against someone in its history. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, a follow-up question, a question from another person. Does the Kentucky Conservation Agency spot check sites to determine if the practices are in place and if the now resource concerns address um, when the farmers uh, create their own plan? Uh, no, that's why it's just a self-certification program. And that yeah. landowner self-certifies it. Mm -hmm. Self-certification, so there is no spot check at the present time. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Kim, thanks so much. Any last-minute things before I switch presenters? No, I'll be happy to take any questions when we get to that point in time. Okay, if you'll hang in here uh, on the uh, phone, and we'll leave you unmuted. So you'll be live TV also here for a little bit. Kim, thanks so much for your presentation.